Well, good morning, Trevor. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's going well this lovely spring morning. How are you, Trevor? I'm awesome today. Fantastic. The sun is shining, that. and uh, <laughs> I woke up and my feet were pointing upwards. That's a pretty good idea. <laughs> been for a walk, done a workout, all those beautiful things we get to do up here on the Gold Coast. So how's that? Oh, excellent. Yeah. It's all about that work-life integration component. <laughs> and that's, that's, actually, that's actually a good lead-in because, I mean, this morning what we're going to really be talking about is the, the, the journey to the cloud, the one practice uh, journey to the cloud. And in particular, your journey to the cloud as an accountant, Trevor, so... Yeah, I thought, we thought it was a really good thing. We started to we've been together a bit over the last few weeks, Roland, haven't we? And mm. you know, you 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 were there with us right from the beginning, and you've been asking me a lot of questions about why did you do it and where did it all begin and and so forth. So we thought it was a really good chance to maybe go back over a few things and also revisit one practice a little bit and 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 go through a, bit, a couple of weeks of you know really getting back into the the fundamentals of of why we're why we're doing this why are we making yeah. this process and this step that we're uh, uh, of moving to the cloud I, I think that's important i often tell people to watch the the ted talk um that simon sinek did yeah. uh, around how great leaders inspire and that whole talk is about starting with the why yeah yeah. So understanding the why we're we doing what we're doing, and essentially, you know, your journey started when, Trevor, back in 2010. 2010, I attended. Um, I think there was about 10 people in a CPA office uh, in Melbourne, and uh, we were all sitting there listening to Hamish Edwards talk about the cloud and him moving his business to the cloud and this new program that he'd written called Zero, and uh -huh. um, I wouldn't leave him alone. <laughs> I, I just did not let him leave the room and um, I, I, we, we just started talking and I think within, um, so that was in about April and by May um, we were sitting down together with Rod Drury, Hamish Edwards, uh, Daniel Jones, Wayne Smith, all names that you should all know and we were writing what we were calling the, you know, back then the Hub, the hub one, the, the, the Zero Partner Programme. Yes, and uh, there's been also a lot of discussion. Last week, we're uh, a couple of weeks ago we're at APC, probably seeing one of the largest partner organisations and partner programs in, in existence, and um, you know, saying, "Well, we, you know, I was back there when I wrote that, uh, and we sat down together and talked about how do we get accountants interested in in zero. So, I think it's been quite successful. Um, I think the cloud journey has been quite successful, but it's um, you know. Uh, yeah, back then we were talking about what's that process that we were going to do mm. and how do we get accountants interested in in the cloud, I suppose. Exactly, and, and it is a journey and, and our journey continues. So today we're going to talk about the one practice uh, a journey, cloud for accountants, zero practice manager, I mean that started our life as Workflow Max, um, and essentially start to have a look at the software that is, is the cornerstone of Hub One solution for the accounts vertical. That's yeah. the, the best way that I can really articulate it. We augment the functionality of the Office 365 solution, in particular Outlook, Outlook Web App, the browser-based version of Outlook, and SharePoint Online, an enterprise document management system. The augmentation that we've done allows us to plug into things like Zero Practice Manager and other practice management solutions, extract metadata from those tools regarding clients, uh, and then automate document management for, for accounting firms. Because when I talk to accounting firms, and I don't come from that background, like we started this discussions because I, I'm the geek and, you, and you're the accountant. And yeah. really, the, I mean, this whole you don't know what you don't know started out as, as us having weekly one-on-ones. And, and, and I'm saying, Trevor, why are you doing it that way? Why don't you do it this way? And you're like, well, you don't know what you don't know. So yeah. <clears throat> this has been our, our journey over the last year. And really, Trevor, what I'm looking at, looking for today is to understand a bit a bit about your journey okay so you know what what is the one practice what are our goals and missions and and how have we been going with the, the zero con what effect have we had on different accounting firms over the last five or six years well yeah like so firstly congratulations to Morrow's um Morrow's are a client of ours and they won the 100 percent zero award this this year and um you know, and they attribute a lot of that move has been, you know, the move to, to us assisting them, the move to zero, zero practice manager, but also Office 365. So awesome with that. 
little award, a couple of little award session last week, uh, ARN awards last week. Hub, Hub One again was highly commended as software developer of the year, which was huge. Um, a few sore heads the next day, I can assure you of that. <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic, really. Yeah. Uh, homegrown independent software vendor of the year, highly commended. Um, a, a great acknowledgement from the IT community as to the innovations that we've been making over the last few years. Yeah, yeah, and and the work that we've been doing uh, at Hub One to to you know really develop something that is is quite amazing at that point. So so let, let that, that photo there is a photo of myself and Rod Drury. They you know back in 2011 they had the first ZeroCon and and Rod um, heard me talking on stage and he said you know what that sounds a really cool story. Do you want to come to Auckland? So that was my first opportunity as a public speaker to go over there and that was just before. I was about to go on stage so that was pretty exciting but my story that I was talking about was I was really I was getting a little bit lost as to our industry and frustrated with the time it took to get things done and the lack of technology in in our industry and um, you know I was uh, uh, you know starting to get a disen bit disenchanted with it all um, and and more importantly now I think we go to the point where we see that the vendors are still controlling the destinies of our accounting industry, of our of our firms. So they're still out there, and you know, and we see often, you know, the MYVs and even the zeros today, and the and the the, the, the quickens and the APSs are basically designing and saying, this is how you've got to run your practice, and this is the document management system you've got to use to integrate with us. So, and I was back in 2010 trying to move away from that that hold that they had over my business and. And, I, and that's where I saw zero, and I saw that, that cloud applications and the APIs and the integrations and the ability to integrate simply as being the catalyst as to why I wanted to move to the cloud. You know, there were a huge amount of benefits. There was flexibility, portability, you know, all of that sort of stuff. Mobility, you know, we got, we had a large amount of reduced costs, but the essence of it all is that ability to integrate across multiple um, tenancies and across multiple sites and oh, in a lot easier way. Multiple sites and, and, and data silos. I think one of the issues that is, is my concern with IT is people look for a solution that is a, a single standalone solution that doesn't really integrate as an entity with other solutions. And our goal at one, uh, our goal at Hub One is to really bring together a platform solution. So if the stuff doesn't integrate natively, we make it integrate, you know, we, we yeah. work and work and work until we can extract data from one system to the other. Now, for things that are, are sitting in a server under Jamama Puddle Duck's desk in the office, you know, um, it's, it's hard, harder for us to, to do that integration. However, if the data silo I'm referring to is sitting in the cloud, it's a lot easier for us to plug into that from the one practice software. And that's really our goal. So what we're doing is, this is a journey, guys. And as more and more um, accounting uh, uh, software becomes online, and we talk about zero because this, these are the first guys, Rod Drury and the guys were the first ones to really start putting all of that in the cloud. As more and more of them come online, we will build the integration components. We will continue to innovate and continue to develop. And I'm going to talk to you towards the end about some other innovations that we've recently made uh, around connectivity. Yeah, yeah. So this is the first thing. So, you know... Um when we're doing ZeroCon and we went to 2012 and and so forth, and what's really interesting if you go if we go back through every single Zero uh, uh, ZeroCon through the awards, mm. one of our clients, one of the Hub One clients, has won in a Zero award. So we're really proud of that, and we're really proud yes. of those those processes. And and more importantly, that our clients are getting rewarded for the the hard work they've done at cutting their teeth in the first stages of of doing this. So we're really proud yes. of that as well. And and now, being innovative. Yeah, this is the first slide. This is going back, way back to, to to our deep dive, and we were talking about what are we doing. So, what does it mean to be a modern practice? What does it mean to run your practice in the cloud? You know, there's thousands of choices of different software and infrastructure you could use. And what we did is we said, Nick came to me, and he went to five other accounting firms, and he said, Well, what do you want? And rather than you guys spending all your time going through and trying to find those solutions, develop the integration. You know, we've spent nearly $4 million in research and development to define and, develop, to, to define and de deliver a solution for the accounting industry. 
You know, that's a lot of money, and, and mm. we're bringing that all together, and we're focusing just on the accounting industry vertical. It is really clearly that's what we're focusing on. And what yep. Nick did is he built a reference architecture. You know, so we can roll and we roll and Nick can write documents, can't he? He just writes pages <laughs> and pages. That guy can write. And, and he sat down and he said, well, looks like you need some communication. And, and Roland, we're going to talk a little bit more about internet yes. connectivity and so forth and communication. Collaborating, collaborating on documents and email and, and using documents to work together. So the move and the change from that, you know, website and marketing was a key factor of the accounting firms. Their desktop PC, how do we manage that desktop PC? Mm -hmm. If they don't need servers anymore, what hardware do they need? Those sort of things. So we went out and researched it and came up with some solutions for people. Yep, but really what we created was a roadmap that any small, medium practice could utilize to take their firm to the cloud and create, I mean, initially this was called the modern practice. We call it one practice now, but it was called the modern practice because it was saying, guys, if you want to drag yourself kicking and screaming into the 21st century, we have got a strategic roadmap for you to do this uh, through an enterprise level architecture. And, you know, the, the, this, is, this is a key component of what we do at Hub One. Exactly, exactly. It's about, and, and we continue to do it. And, and that's what the, the beauty of these you don't know what you don't know sessions. And the feedback we're getting from the people that are listening is that they're seeing where the technology is going to because this moves, this the technology moves at a rapid pace. And Roland and our team and the developers and that are constantly grabbing that, that technology and that improvements in technology and the new system, the new processes, and saying, how can we fit this into an accounting firm? How do we do that? Trevor, okay, here is something that's new in the market. Will this yes. work in an accounting firm? And I go, yeah, maybe. But, you know, and mm -hmm. that's why I've got to be on the day-to-day. -day. But it's also really important that our clients are involved in that process. And they're always Definitely. asking us, saying, oh, I'm really stuck on this and I'm really stuck on that. How do we do that better? And the feedback we get from these sessions, the feedback we get uh, from our partner community, we take all of that and we create what's called DCRs or design change requests for our development team. Somebody says, we would like this button to be over here. We look at it. If we get enough requests, we make the change. We're on version 4.2 of this software and we continue to develop and innovate. Um, and, and in that, one of, you know, all of these squares are, are on the right hand side of your screen here are trying to resolve a particular business pain point for a small medium practice and one of the pain points that we've had over the last a while is with regards to connectivity. You know, we've had people who moved to the cloud and said, well, it's great moving to the cloud, but what we're finding is bandwidth is an issue for us in wherever we are. So over the last uh, six months, we've been working with a, a particular a solution provider in creating Jump what we're calling... Jump slides rolling, I'll get there. Yeah. There we go. Ooh. All right, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There we are. All right. What we're looking at doing is creating connectivity as a service. So I've shared a, a link for you. Uh, there we go. I'm jumping ahead here. Sorry, Trevor. I'm right. messing up with your flow. Okay. Uh, connectivity as a service to deal with one of the pain points. And we, we've partnered with a, well, the world's second largest telco, who, whose name is Verizon. Anybody who's worked in the States will know Verizon very well or had any sort of international dealings with WAN-based or wide area network companies. And we've packaged up on a per user per month basis connectivity as a service. So I've shared the link for you um, in the IM window. So if you click on the little chat bubble, guys, a little instant message window will come up and you can click on the link and register your interest if connectivity is an issue, if connectivity is an issue for um, anybody you know, really, you could share this link with them. But what we're trying to do here is we're constantly improving the solution. And as the journey is going and new solutions are coming out, we're adding to it. So, Trevor, if, can we you jump back, Trevor, and you can carry on on the document no, manager. No, yes. Before we go that's back, okay? I just want to cover yeah. up a couple of things that, that I think everybody would be really interested in. Is One is that Verizon is the only authorized um, telco that is is able to provide Skype for Business E5 um, yes. globally, correct? Oh, no, they, they're authorized in Australia. They're, they're, they're actually 18 
geos or 18 countries where we've got different telcos from Microsoft uh, providing the Skype for Business um, E5 integration. So that's your dialing conferencing, your PSD and your public switch telephone network integration and your private branch exchange integration. And we knew Verizon was doing this in the States, which is, is why we've chosen to partner with them and be the first to bring it to Australia. Yep, and so there's infrastructure already in Australia? There is infrastructure already in Australia. They've spent the last 10 years um, lighting up different buildings around the, the major cities. But uh, Verizon provide a lot of the backbone or the wide area connection. In fact, they provide over over 60% of all the world's internet traffic travels over a Verizon network. So they're, they're a massive a massive telecommunications organization with a, a global footprint. And as you move to a global solution in the cloud with a, a player like Microsoft, which is what we're doing, I think it just makes it makes sense to me, Trevor, to then uh, use a, a global telco that is integrated with Microsoft. Microsoft themselves use Verizon as their service provider. Yeah. And, and so when it says it's optimized for Skype for Business... Mm. Well, so. what we've done is we've worked with the Verizon guys to, to tweak some network settings to make sure that you get the best possible performance. And we've also worked uh, that's the best possible performance for Skype for Business and for the one practice solution. We have some of our servers which do the integration components sitting in what Microsoft called Azure or Azure, depending on how you want to pronounce it, but essentially that's an infrastructure as a service play, and the servers that Hub One uses, we host in a Microsoft data center. Now, the business justifications for doing that is so that we've got elasticity and scale. Elasticity means things that happened with the census, for example, will not happen with our server. Because as soon as we get to a, a point of sixty um, percent utilization, we can scale up and scale out those services. So we've built elasticity into it, which is a true cloud solution. Uh, as soon as we reach a threshold, we scale up and create another server, scale up and create another server, scale up and create an, a, another server. And it, so, it doesn't mean click on here, register interest, interest, and you have to go on to this straight. No, what we're talking about is register your interest have a look at it, understand it, but it mm. also means that you can also plan. We understand people are already locked into contracts and so yes. forth like that. You know, The concept of what we're doing is that you're no longer ever going to be locked into contracts. There's not yeah. going to be an upfront charge to go and have it connected and brought to yep. your door. Um, the, you know, yes. my understanding as well is that the, the opportunity for, we've got quite a few of our, our clients are, are based in remote locations like Cairns and Dubbo and, and so forth like that. So let's find out and let's see if we can get that, that, that connection brought to your door and, um, and get exactly. some solutions for you. At, at, exactly. At, you know, at like at, at a per thing. user per month costing really. Verizon are, are busy um, spending large amounts of money building infrastructure in Australia. If there is interest, they will invest more. They see it as a growth market and they have seen it as a growth market for some time. Uh, a lot of the large enterprises in Australia, the big four banks, DOD, federal government, all of these guys run Verizon's networks. Yeah. So what we wanted, like I said, was just a global telecommunications player to match our global cloud provider, which is primarily Microsoft. Yeah, and Port Douglas says Jacinda, so maybe that's <laughs> All right. Organize well, register your well. interest, guys, and we will be talking to the, the guys at Verizon and seeing where we've got interest. And you can send this link on to anybody else who has issues with their connectivity. All right. Awesome. So, so I just jumped through a bit. So the, when we talk about, um, so there's three key scenarios, and, and I, I won't, um, I'll touch on this really quickly. When we're talking about processes that we have in our business, there is there's paper, we've got to scan it, we've got to file it, and more importantly, we've got to find it. We've got templates, so this is what one practice is built around. We grab data, and that data in the past has come from Zero Practice Manager. Now we're grabbing, getting to the point where we can bring data in from multiple sources so that we've got, again, that, that improvement of the integrations, filing and finding the document. And the same thing, save, share, file, find. So at the end of the day, filing and finding is the, is the key around one practice. 
but we've got to take it to that next level. And this is where I want to start to get to with you, Roland, over the next few weeks, and also with our um, our listeners coming in and saying, where are the sticky points? What? Where are we getting stuck with? We're going through those processes. We're creating our documents. We're using Template Manager. We're using Scan Document Manager. We're using Mail Manager, and then we're getting caught out. So. Things that I want to sort of I'm I'm pushing further on is 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 electronic signatures. So we've had some feedback. We're getting closer to being able we can provide it. We know we can provide it, but provide a cost-effective solution for our clients. So we're working on that. We we've we've developed one practice to work with folders. We listen to our clients. Our clients mm. said they weren't ready for metadata and they really didn't understand <laughs> search and they weren't all of those sort of things. So they said, you know, we need folders. So every one of our solutions, and we're probably not going to have time to go into the demos um, where we go through that process. Everyone can create and we can use a folder now so we can save directly to a folder. We create a quick links to go to the document because people were, were saying, oh, I, you know, when I've saved the document, I would go search for it. So understanding search functionality in, in, in detail and understanding what it means by full text index indexing and why it takes a little bit of time for the documents to become available to search Roland is, is, is other aspects that we needed to do. So, and then the next thing I want to do is really start working with, with our team on building. We've already got integration. We've already got metadata as all available in mm. my practice, but we're not really, no one's really using it um, to the level that it should be. So I want to start to expand on metadata and start educating you guys on the call on how to use metadata to create workflows and to create and simplify those solutions. So let's see if we can, if you've got stuck on any point anybody's having trouble with or finding that things are taking longer than they should be in their practice, yes. send me an email or send roll, send me an email. It's TJS at Hub One. So. TJS or support at Hub One even. And yep. guys, with regards to metadata, I want to just articulate what metadata is. Metadata is information about the data. It's not the data itself. It's not the contents of the file. It's the information about that particular file. So the name, the timestamp, who created it, any keywords related to that. Uh, customer details could be included in metadata. So there's a large amount of metadata within uh, the one practice already. What we have issues with is really the change management. People are you so used to their map network drives. I go to the G drive, on the G drive, I click this folder, then I click this folder, then I click this folder, and then I get my file. Yeah. So this is, a, this is a pattern recognition methodology that a lot of people have been utilizing for the last 20 or years around filing systems. And, and they're comfortable with that. Now, when we start to change with metadata, we say, well, I want you to go to the top here. And if we go back to you know our, our, our enterprise level architecture, there's a search button. In, search in SharePoint is incredibly powerful. And we just say to people, go to the search button, type in what you're looking for, and the metadata will be will be queried and that file will come up so as people get more and more more um, familiar with searching on the internet I want them to start thinking about using that search functionality within the one practice software because honestly using folders is fitting a, a square peg into a round hole SharePoint is a web-based system designed to find content based on metadata we don't have to go down that folder structure according to Gartner in folder structures or server message blocks, SMBs or, or map network drives as they're called, your G drive, your H drive, your Q drive, your whatever drive you've got, your M drive, okay, more than 60% of that content is duplicate content. The reason why it's duplicate content is because different people have different pattern recognition methodologies for finding files. So Trevor, you might decide to store it in this folder, I decide to store it in this folder, and, and what we lose is what I'm going to call spot, and, and spot is my single point of truth. I would like one single copy of that file. Now SharePoint tries to eliminate that by using metadata and moving away from folders. We still have the client folders within one practice. But as this journey continues, we are going to try an education and a change management process to move away, to, to move away from this and to start to use something that was developed in the last 20 years, you know, <laughs> which is SharePoint and the metadata, server message blocks and, and the G drive is 
old school guys oh. um, and really that's something that uh, over time we are going to be moving away from. So the issue as an accountant, Roland, is that we, we go through and we create a bunch of documents. So let's say we, yes. let's, let's think about where we wear So we go through and we say, okay, we've got to do a set of financial accounts for a, a group of clients. We've got to do mum, dad, a trust and a company, for example. And when we create all those documents, we want to put them somewhere so that someone else can easily go and find them and then do what they have to do with those documents and send them out. We've also receiving documents from our clients. And we need to put them somewhere so that they're all together so we know what they relate to because those particular yes. documents don't have anything within there that tells us what that is. So that's the process that we're used to. And what I, my understanding is from metadata is, is that rather than using a folder, we can attach a tag to that document so that we know, ah, oh, that's 2016 end of year um, documents and so forth. So then you can yes. search for that and you can easily find those that particular document because we've said that's end of year finals or whatever it is. I'm not sure how that process will be. So well, that's no, as we the file gets out. created, metadata gets created for that file and yep. then you can add or append additional metadata to it. But it, it's not a, in the file, it's, it sits alongside the file and is part of the file, but it's not of the file itself, if, if that makes sense. So it's data about the data, which is what confuses people about metadata. That's, I don't understand it. But if you create that, it says it was a Word document created by TJS at hub1.com on the 20th of the 9th, 2016, the following keywords were there. These are the timestamps. This who's edited it, and it's got a whole bunch of information regarding uh, uh, the, the, the file itself. Cool. So, next week, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to one practice and we're going to do a bit of a demo of, of how it works. I'm going to grab a document from start to finish and a group of documents from start to finish. We won't have time. We're going to have to do this over a couple of weeks. And Roland's going to watch and Roland's going to observe and you guys are going to input on it and we're going yes. to come up with how metadata is going to help us um, make those processes easier and drag us away from the folders. Is that fair? That is fair. I believe, you know, for those of you who are fans of television, you may be watching Orange is the New Black. I've got a saying, collaboration is the new competition. And everybody, <laughs> no, really, it's like Orange is the New Black. Collaboration is the new competition. Everybody on this call is somebody who is on the cutting edge of developing solutions for accounting firms. Either you're in, up against the coalface doing it yourself and dealing with these problems day to day. And, and what we need is we are going to work with your input. This iron window is great for those of you chatting the iron window. Get used to chatting in there. Get used to giving us feedback, um, sending it to, to sales at Hub One or um, TJS at Hub One. Okay. And let us know what your pain points are as we're developing new solutions and you know if you've got other people in the organization who want to get a more comprehensive understanding of one practice and how to use it properly I know there's some people on the call I, I see you know there's some people who, there's, there's one person here from an accounting firm with 50 people in it uh, the next week try and get some of the other people who are using one practice on the call and let's develop this skill set Let's get them using the one practice software the way it was designed to be used and really help improve the productivity and improve the bottom line of the firm. You know, half an hour on this call could save you an hour a week, two hours a week for everybody that attends it. So the next yeah. three weeks, Trevor, we're going to be doing one practice deep dive. Primarily, we're going to be focusing on document management. And I'm, I want to learn from you, Trevor, all the tips and tricks that yeah. you've accumulated over the last few years in, in building the modern practice and then building one practice. For the last year... I've been teaching you tips and tricks, and now the tables have turned, my friend. It is yes. your chance to teach me tips and tricks about one practice. So you don't know what you don't know. This time applies to Roly. I'm nervous. So that's all, right. all up to you. It's all up to you, big guy. <laughs> awesome. Thank you again, Roland. Thank you, everybody, for attending today. Uh, we will have the um, this recorded and uploaded onto YouTube. 
Roland, what is the YouTube um, channel that uh, we can go to? We have them? got the, if they just search for the Hub One, uh, they should come up with the Hub One YouTube channel. Or if they search under your name or my name, actually, unfortunately, it also comes up. Oh, so okay. cool. for the stalkers out there, there we go, Dave Hamilton, Hub One dot uh, YouTube dot com forward slash Hub One. I told you it was a Hub One channel. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time today. Next week, please let's get more people on the yes. call from your company. It's going to be important. It's going to help productivity. You know, there's this whole saying, the CFO um, <laughs> says to the CEO, what happens if we, if we train our people a, a, and they leave? And the CEO replies to the CFO, he says, what happens if we don't train them and they stay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Trevor, thank you once again. It's Gosh, been an honor to you. Two clangers today. Orange is the new two. black. <laughs> what if they stay? Love. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Yes. What if they stay? Um, Guru, all, all our sessions are recorded and they all go into that youtube.com forward slash hub one. So we'll be putting this one up there as well as any all the ones over the next few weeks. So um, we'll be pushing them up there. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for your time and attention today. Thank you, Trevor. Exciting. See you then. Goodbye.